Welcome to our Wednesday noon service of healing. The service begins in the bulletin on page two. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now a reading of scripture. A reading from the book of Hosea, Israel's sin and captivity. Israel is a luxuriant vine that yields its fruit. The more his fruit increase, the more altars he built. As his country improved, he improved his pillars. Their heart is false. Now they must bear their guilt. The Lord will break down their altars and destroy their pillars. For now they will say, we have no king, for we do not fear the Lord. And a king, what could he do for us? Samaria's king shall perish like a splinter on the face of the waters. The high places of Aven, the sin of Israel shall be destroyed. Thorn and thistle shall grow up on their altars. They shall say to the mountains, cover us into the hills, fall on us. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap steadfast love, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the day is Psalm 106, found on page 741 in your Book of Common Prayer. Hallelujah! Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord or show forth all his praise? Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of elect and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebearers did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt, they did not consider, consider your marvelous works, nor remember the abundance of your love, they defied the Most High at the Red Sea, but he gave them, but he saved them for his name's sake, to make his power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he led them through the deep as through a desert. He saved them from the hands of those who hated them, and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their oppressors, not one of them was left. Then they believed his word, words and sang to him songs of praise, but they soon forgot his deeds and did not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness, and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked for, but sent leanness into their soul. They imitated Moses in the camp and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. The, the earth opened and swallowed Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. Fire blazed up against their company and flames devoured the wicked. Here, in, re here ends the reading. The Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. 
These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. This gospel reading has Jesus sending out his 12 apostles. Uh, first, it says he summoned the 12 disciples. And I think there's a certain hierarchy that Jesus had amongst his people that followed him. There were, for example, I always kind of put a little pyramid up and to kind of show at the bottom line, there were believers, people who, as he traveled around, uh, who believed and they listened to his sermons, they listened to what he was preaching, they saw the actions of his healing that was going on. And they were believers. They said, like, this is the guy. <laughs> this is the Christ, for sure. But that's all about they did. They believed, okay? And they didn't follow him. Followers are those folks who followed after him. I mean, they saw, they believed, and they began to follow him from place to place. And so there was a gathering of people behind him. From the followers, he gathered folks who want to be, like, they call disciples. Followers, again, are those people who kind of, like I said, they followed Jesus uh, probably out of either curiosity or probably because they wanted to hear what he was saying, but they didn't want to become disciples. Disciples are people who take a discipline about listening to what he's saying, taking notes, okay? Like we'd always tell my students in class, take great notes, okay? So that way you can study for the exam that's coming along. But the issue is they, these are people we call disciples because they're taking notes and they want to be like the master. As Jesus says later on, the disciple is not above the master, the master is not above the disciple, but the disciple tries to become like the master because they're studying and taking notes. And then from the disciples, okay, we find he takes these 12 and calls them apostles. Now he gives them then authority to go out and of course to, uh, to the different places around the lost sheep of Israel and to proclaim again the kingdom of God has come. And so these people going out with authority. Apostle is a person who goes out with the authority. And I think I've used this example before when I said that I was in Europe at Supreme Headquarters. Um, my section I ran, that was the people that had the switchboards. And my switchboard operators were down the hall from my office making all this noise. And uh, it was kind of irritating at a point. And so uh, when I saw one of my telephone installers coming in and I called him, I said, go down the hall and tell those operators to be quiet. They're making too much noise. So he went down, of course, and he tried to tell them to be quiet, but they didn't, okay? They made more noise and they shouted him down. And he left, he came back to my office, he said, Sergeant Major, they won't listen to what I'm saying. I said, you go back and tell them, Sergeant Major Miller said they're making too much noise, they're be quiet. He went down and as soon as he mentioned my name, they shut up, <laughs> got quiet as a church mouse. And so he was my apostle. He went with my authority. And I use that example because Jesus is doing the same thing now with these former disciples, now apostles, who are going out two by two, again, to proclaim his good word and have authority over uh, the demons. And of course, they're gonna be quite happy as we hear later on, they come back rejoicing that even the demons were subject to them in his name. And so apostle, but you have to be a disciple first. And I think this is where the word discipline comes in. The discipline of becoming like Jesus listening to his teaching, listening to what he's saying, following his actions, and going out and doing the same thing that he was doing. This is our job. We are disciples. As a matter of fact, at the end of Matthew's gospel, he says he sends them out with authority to make disciples. Their job is to go out and to make more disciples. And of course, we're all here now because they did. They went out close to over 1,770 years ago. Okay, they went out and of course, it's 2000. I'm just going to put these numbers together here because it was a long time ago. But in any case, the issue is that they went out and that's why we're here today because they went out and they made disciples and spread all over the world. So what does that say for us? 
at this time, and especially at this time of this pandemic and all these other things that are going on in our, in our country and in the world, really, do we have the wherewithal to be disciples, okay? To be, have the discipline of studying what Jesus has been preaching to us and to go out and to put that into effect because it's pretty clear he gave us the commandment that we should love one another. Okay, that means everybody. Now, some folks are not lovable at one point in time in life, but the issue is that that does not relinquish us from the commandment to love one another and to go forth and to carry his word to everyone that we meet. These words I have spoken in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now the litany of healing. <clears throat> Let us name before God those to whom we offer our prayers. Especially, I want to a special attention for a little Benjamin Underwood at this time as he's going home from the hospital and he's dealing with these seizures. O God of compassion, giver of life and health, we pray your healing mercies upon all who are in any way affected by the outbreak of this COVID-19 coronavirus. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken, relieve their pain and restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength. Grant to all in authority the courage to make wise decisions that are essential for the common good and strengthen them to lead institutions that care for those whom they serve. Protect those who are compelled to work farms and fields, city streets and factories, that put them in danger with little pay. Watch over all first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them from all danger, keep them safe in the knowledge that it is through their sacrifice and service that the health of the whole community is promoted. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God of all comfort and our only help in time of need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore the wholeness, whatever is broken by human sin in our lives in our nation and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your life we see life. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have made us in your image and called us to be the body of Christ. We have not honored your image in one another. We have not loved others as you have loved us. Forgive us our sin of not seeing you in each other. This pandemic has highlighted the racial disparities in our communities. The violence toward people of color has sickened us. Now give us strength to stand up and work with all the strength we possess to bring racial justice in our church and in our community. 
Give us the will to do your will in this work. In the name of Jesus, who always stood with people who were oppressed, even when it cost him his life. Amen. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us with humbly beseech you, O Lord. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all to put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven and earth and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now is our time when we're not close by each other, we can lay hands on each other. But at this point in time, as we lay for prayers for healing, I ask you to lay your hand up on your own forehead. And at the time of the invocation of the Trinity, sign yourself with the sign of the cross. And if there are two or three together, you can reach out and touch each other at this point in time. We offer ourselves, our souls and bodies in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ to sustain us with his presence, to drive away all sickness of body and spirit, and to give you that victory of life and peace, which will enable you to serve him both now and evermore. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
I offer this Eucharist this, this, this afternoon, a special intention for uh, little Benjamin Underwood, for his mother Brandy and for his dad, Marshall, and of course for their sister, Maggie. And we ask, oh Lord, that you will watch over them and we pray especially for his healing. Eucharistic Prayer A, beginning on page 361. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. From your goodness, we have this bread to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It'll become for us our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. From your goodness, we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It'll become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And now using the prayer from the confraternity of the Blessed Sacrament, since we cannot physically receive this communion, we ask that we would pray this prayer of spiritual communion together. In union, dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let me never be separated from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. And now let us close with the post-communion prayer of the healing service. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, in all ways to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.